Hey there, welcome back to another video this time around. It is my review of the 1995 comedy Slam Dunk Ernest. Now, this is one of those films that I only decided to pick it up from a place called Stuff here locally because it was super cheap. And also because of the fact that, you know, I thought maybe it might be worth worth it for a laugh. Just to see how dumb this movie is. Sometimes I do that, uh, and usually it's against my better judgment, but when it's like a really cheap price, it's like, okay, sure, uh, I'll take a shot on this one. Also, I tend to like a lot of basketball movies, even ones a lot of people consider to be lame, like Air Bud or Eddie with uh, Whoopi Goldberg, so I thought maybe there could be some fun to be had with this one. No, this film is anything but a slam dunk. It's a total air ball. This is the last film that was made under the deal with ABC Studios, with M. Shell, and this is the last Ernest film to have any semblance of a, of a genuine budget behind it, but it still doesn't look like that. Like It's crazy to me that these Ernest sequels at this point in time, they all had budgets of like $3 million, but it never really seemed like it was ever on the screen. Like, did they give the entire uh, a budget to Jim Varney or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to, to, to agree to be in this movie? I, I have no idea, because it doesn't show up on the screen. Uh, this one, it features the return of John Cherry as the director. And is it a triumphant return compared to Coke Sam's? I mean... Not really, but it's definitely a step up. <laughs> I gotta be honest here. The film looks better. It's more consistent in terms of its style, in terms of the direction. It's not the car crash that was uh, uh, Ernest Goes to School. It actually looks like a direct-to-video movie, or it doesn't look like an episode of a TV show. So I'll give it that. But it's a very uh, small praise because... The same just lethargic going through the motions direction is still present here compared to what Cherry did in other Ernest films. I don't think his heart was really in it at this point. Uh, he was just doing it because he you know, was paying the bills. And really, he wasn't really getting a lot of other opportunities to direct other than doing these Ernest films. Uh, the opportunities were few and far between. I mean, if you look at his filmography... He didn't direct a lot other than these Ernest movies. So the only way he was ever getting opportunities to direct anything like this is through these Ernest films. I mean, he did some other stuff later on. He did a, a Laurel and Hardy reboot in, 19, in 1999 and some film called Pirates of the Plain with Tim Curry. But other than that, like, he didn't do anything else. Other than, you know, the riddle of the gloom beam, which was awful. So it was just one of those things where he never really had an opportunity to do anything else. So I think at this certain point in his career, he just he just started to lose passion for doing earnest films. It was just another job for him. And you can really see that in the direction, especially when it comes to the basketball scenes. There's no real life to them energy, sense of excitement. Even some of the dream sequences, even some of those moments, there's not much to them. Or the nightmare scenes where Ernest is essentially hallucinating that he's, I guess, being courted by the devil. But then I, you kind of find out that he kind of is. He was, court he was Manipulated by this demon who's, I guess, disguising himself as some sports agent for some reason. But yeah, uh, and, and I know for a film like this, maybe, you know, criticizing the direction this much is maybe a bit uh, overboard. But I don't think it is because I've seen what John Cherry can do and he's done a lot better work in Ernest Scared Stupid or Ernest Goes to Jail, or Ernest Goes to Camp, or Saves Christmas. Like, he's shown that he can actually be a pretty decent director. But, yeah, I just, I do, I do really feel that this was at the point in his career where he was like, 
you know, it pays the bills. And that's really about it. Now, the screenplay, which is also by John Cherry and a guy named Daniel Butler, this really feels like something that you would see if there was an Ernest cartoon. And I still am surprised we didn't get one. I know there was a, a plan to maybe do an Ernest film where it was a collaboration with the WWF, but it was at the time when they were starting to get ready for the Attitude Era, so I don't think that would really fit. Can you imagine Ernest going up against Mankind <laughs> and Stone Cold Steve Austin or the, the Rock? The Rock going up and doing a promo on Ernest. I, I can't, but at the same time, I wish we had that rather than this. I definitely do. You know what would make more sense is WCW. WCW makes a lot more sense, and I could have honestly seen WCW doing it. Uh, having uh, you know Ernest involved in, in the WCW shenanigans. Having Ernest be a member of the NWO. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, but yeah, um, see, that's the thing. Like, I'd rather talk about that. What if than what we actually got here, because this is just boring. This is such, such a generic screenplay and say what you want about Ernest goes to school. At least you had the interesting dynamic of smart versus, you know, normal Ernest here. You have. Ernest gets a magic pair of basketball shoes from the Archangel of Basketball, played by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's slumming for a paycheck. And the magic shoes make it so he can leap like 10 feet in the air, like he's got Flubber in his shoes. Uh, imagine those scenes in Flubber where Robin Williams puts Flubber on his shoes and jumps and does all these crazy slam dunks. But imagine it being even lamer and like even worse. That's what you get with all of the scenes involving basketball with Ernest and his magic shoes. Also, there's this plot with the basketball team who also work as these cleaners. And the way that it's written by, I think, honestly, I think uh, two white guys, it's kind of racist at times, which makes it kind of uncomfortable to watch. Um, but also the way that they're written makes these guys come across like total dumbasses and dipshits. Why are you practicing your basketball, uh, moves in a mall? Like they put up a basketball hoop and they start just practicing in the mall. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's no gym that you can practice in. You'd be better off practicing outside like in one of your uh, teammates' uh, front uh, driveway than in the mall. That's a liability waiting to happen, and especially since Ernest is also on your team, or not the basketball team, not yet anyway. He's there. He's a part of the cleaning crew. So, yeah, when you have Ernest on your cleaning crew, you definitely shouldn't be playing basketball indoors. And, you know, that's that's what happens. You know, predictably, Ernest does something, ruins something, causes a fire. They get in trouble. Ernest uh, takes the fall. They have some newfound respect for him for whatever reason. And they let him be a part of the team because he just wants to be one of the guys. I just want to be one of the guys. I just want to play basketball. And you even had like an opening scene that was like a flashback to when he was a kid. And it was painful and, you know, kid earnest and, you know, the kids were telling him not to shoot the ball and he shot the ball. And of course, you know, he missed the, the backboard by a million miles. And yeah, he becomes a part of the team, but he's basically a mascot, essentially just relegated to the sidelines, but he's earnest. So we won't shut up. And he just does these cheerleading routines and distracts the, the team and they lose a big game. And I'm like. You aren't that great of a team, Clean Sweep, which is just a dumb name for a basketball team. Uh, but okay, you're not that good of a team if all it takes for you to lose focus is some guy just being a cheerleader on the sidelines. Like, so 
by that logic, if they actually had cheerleaders, they would also be equally as distracting to these uh, uh, basketball players. You're not that good of a team then. If all it takes for you to lose focus and lose a game is if somebody's cheerleading on the sidelines or talking on the sideline. Um, but of course, they also lose the game because Ernest is a klutz and knocks over the basketballs and and uh, causes a technical foul. But I'm like, wouldn't that... I don't, I don't know how that's a technical foul. Oh, because he's a member of the team, but he's on the bench and it was an accident. I would think that the, the referees would be like, yeah, that was an accident. Uh, uh, we're just gonna, we're, we're just gonna, uh, collect the basketballs and start the play over. Like, why would it be an automatic technical foul? Like, it's another one of those instances where I'm like, these writers clearly don't watch these sports because there's other instances in these games where something could happen. Like for instance, uh, but not like that because there's never a rack of basketballs on the sideline to begin with. So that's another reason why they don't watch any of these sports is because they thought that there was a rack of basketballs right on the sideline. There is no rack of basketballs on the sideline. This isn't PE class. So <laughs> it knocks over the rack of basketballs, causes them to lose the game. That's when the Archangel basketball comes along and Kareem in his, uh, I'm only here. Uh, to get paid mode. Uh, he gets his paycheck, shows up for a few scenes, gives Ernest his magic shoes. And, and, and of course, it predictably winds up the way you think it does. Ernest gets full of himself, so they recycle the same plot point, the same drama from the last movie, which is the hallmark of a lazy script. And... He, you know, thinks that he's the best player on the team. The be he's a basketball god, and he's getting courted by this agent who turns out to be an actual demon. Because there's no sense of subtlety in this script, and of course, you know, there's the whole stuff where he's selfish. There's this girl that he had a crush on who works as as a you know a lady who's selling lottery tickets in the mall. Never heard of that before either. She's selling lottery tickets, and she's kind of sh she's shy and nerdy. But then she gets corrupted by this demon guy, and now she's just used as a pawn. And there's this whole stuff where Ernest shows up to the big game like he's a, a literal circus performer. And complete with a leotard. And I'm like, this is so dumb. Like, even if he was good at basketball, he would be instantaneously laughed off the court. There would be no... No thoughts of an NBA career. This guy's showing up in a leotard with a with a presenter, like it's S Sigfield and Roy. Like that that would never fucking happen. I think it's Sigfield and Roy. Is it Sigmund and Roy? Um, but yeah, like it's some kind of just fucking big ass Vegas attraction. Give me a break. It'd be a laughing stock uh, of the league. Um, but yeah, and, and he clearly is cheating because he's like freezing in midair and then dropping the ball in there. Like it would be like if in angels in the outfield, everyone actually saw the angels. Like it, you would just be like, well, this is clearly budget bullshit. Like they are literally being, helped by angels from heaven that we can see on the screen like th everything that they're doing is bullshit they're not good baseball players and they're getting helped by outside interference so put an asterisk on their uh, accomplishments or better yet suspend them from the from the mlb it'd be like that it'd be like he's wearing performance enhancing shoes you're banned from the league but you know it's earnest. It's slam dunk earnest. So I probably shouldn't be thinking too much of it, but that's just, it's just, it's just an extension of how these writers don't know what the hell they're writing. They don't know a single goddamn thing about basketball other than, Oh, the ball goes in the hoop. That's about it. And maybe some of the terminology, like a three pointer or a slam dunk. And 
you have this other stuff with the one of the members of Clean Sweep. He has this kid who's impressionable, who initially looked up to his dad, but now that he sees Ernest and he's popular and he's wearing these special shoes, he decides that Ernest is the one that he's going to idolize and steals the shoes from the mall. And of course you have the change of heart moment where he puts the shoes back and Ernest gives up the shoes uh, because they're no longer working for him anyway, because, you know, there is a whole rule that was given to him by the archangel of basketball that, you know, you can use the shoes, but you can only use them for good. And yeah, the shoes come off and then, you know, he is just a regular guy and the clean sweep. They still win the game and Ernest is involved and he shoots the basketball and it still goes in because uh, it bounces off like multiple different things. And I'm just like, OK, all right, whatever. At least the movie is over now and I don't have to sit through any more of these Ernest films. Oh, wait, there's two more after this and they're they're even worse. But. Yeah, this script is not is see, I almost dropped it. I almost dropped like my body physically didn't want, want to hold this movie anymore. That's how bad this film is. But yeah, it's not hilarious and it's not high scoring. It just isn't. Just a bad script, just a bad concept to begin with. An earnest movie where he becomes a basketball player with magic basketball shoes. That's stupid. Um, That would barely work for like 10 minutes of an earnest cartoon. And the cast, I will say this, the cast is better than Ernest Goes to School. Like Jim Varney, he still means well. I still don't hate the character of Ernest. Even though I don't find the character as entertaining or as fun to watch, I find a lot of the stuff that Ernest does in this not funny at all. But Jim Varney, he's still trying and he's still doing his best. And he's still charismatic and he still has that likable, uh, aw shucks sort of thing going on with his character. Kareem Abdul Jabbar sleepwalking through his role as Archangel of Basketball. I wouldn't be surprised if he read his lines off of cue cards. Jay Brazo, who played the devious demon uh, uh agent zamiel uh just hamming it up like crazy almost to the point where i thought it was paul bearer like it would have made like that that's where the wwf thing would have been fun like having wrestling uh uh managers or different wrestlers play different roles like you could have a uh, paul bearer play you know some kind of a uh, different manager who's really a demon you know something like that that could have been fun would have rather seen that than whatever the hell this was Luis Valance plays and uh this this woman named Miss Irma Tara Diddle you also have uh Miguel and Nunez Jr who you might recognize uh uh speaking of demon he was demon he was demon in Friday the 13th part 5 you know, damn those enchiladas uh <laughs> He was uh, also in Juana Man, which you know what? Juana Man, as bad as, as bad as that film is, that is a better basketball movie than this. That's saying a hell of a lot. But yeah, you have Colin Lawrence, who plays Tommy T. You have this uh, Lester Barry, who uh, plays this character named Willie. Um... Yeah, Aaron Joseph, he plays a character named uh, Quincy Quincy Worth. I think it's the kid. He had a little, the son. Yeah, it's Silk. Yeah, Silk Cozart. He plays a character named Barry Worth. So yeah, it's just not, I mean, yeah, Henry O. Watson, he plays a character named Mr. Ellis. There's an actress named Lawson Chambers that plays Dr. Love. But yeah, it's it's not it's not the best cast out there, but with Miguel and Nunez Jr., there's some there's some charisma, some personality there. And 
Yeah, Kareem Abdul Jabbar is at least a sort of big name. Um, even though, I mean, he's not really necessarily someone you don't see do a lot of stuff like this. In fact, he was a genie in a really lame episode of uh, Tales from the Dark Side before this. So this really isn't something that is completely out of left field for him or out of his court. Um, but yeah, I mean, the cast is a little bit better, but still not great. I mean, it couldn't even get any of the actual Charlotte Hornets to be in this movie. Like, they play in a game against the Charlotte Hornets, the clean sweep. That's their prize for winning their inner city tournament or whatever. And, or inner league tournament or however the hell you pronounce it. And they play the Charlotte Hornets and it's just a bunch of Jags, just a bunch of random guys. In, in what are clearly knockoff Charlotte Hornets jerseys. Like, it's not even endorsed by the actual Hornets. I'm like, wow. You couldn't even get any of the Charlotte Hornets. Like, you couldn't get no one. Like, not even Rex Chapman. You couldn't get a single Charlotte Hornet to be in this movie. Um, But yeah, uh, just the cast, it, it's it's not the best. Uh, and it definitely isn't a winning combo. Uh, now there was the cinematography by David Geddes or the editing by Craig Bassett and Chris Ellis. Uh, the editing at times is just, it's not very fluid. It really is very evident in some of the basketball scenes. It really makes it very evident that they didn't really do a, a lot of choreography or honestly good choreography when it comes to the basketball scenes. It just gave people basketball and had them just play. Um, the music by Mark Adler, it, it sounds like something you would hear in a generic advertisement. It, it's, it's just incredibly uh, one note, nothing special. And it's not paced that well. And it doesn't help that, yeah, it's 93 minutes, but there's not really a lot of investment in the plot because it's, Oh, Ernest just wants to be a part of the basketball team and he screws up. And so then he gets gifted magic shoes and now he's playing basketball and he's scoring all these points and he's jumping super high in the air and, and just dropping the ball in the net. He's not even really dunking the ball. Most of the time. That's the other thing too. It's called slam dunk Ernest. And if you look at the scenes where he's, you know, dunking the ball, He's just tossing it in the hoop. That's not a slam dunk. They can't this 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 movie can't even get slam dunks correctly with any sort of consistency. So it, yeah, the basketball scenes, they're not fun to watch. You don't care about the drama involving the sports agent and this the the girl who Ernest has a crush on, uh, who, you know, Tara Diddle, played by Luis Valance. You don't don't really care about that whole angle. Don't care about the whole angle with the with the the guy who, you know, he's the the leader of the team, and uh, you know, he has he has this strained relationship with his son, and his son looks up to Ernest instead of him, and he's got to find a way to to make his son respect him and and look up to him again and. And does it on the court and also gets a contract with the NBA, which is just pure hogwash and just absolute bullshit that would never happen. Some guy who plays in an interleague uh, a basketball team, works as a janitor on the side. Oh, I never made it because I got injured. And he's like in his 30s, never get a contract for the NBA. Are you kidding me? He wouldn't even get invited to a training camp. <laughs> so this is where, which I don't even know if training camps are a thing in the NBA, but yeah, he wouldn't get invited to even be a part of, uh, like, you, you know, one of those, uh, developmental leagues. Like he wouldn't even be get close to that, let alone do an NBA roster. I don't know. People are like, at this point, you're just kind of randomly talking about random stuff yeah because that's that's what slam dunk Ernest does it slam dunks your brain cells and so you're just left there reeling 
uh, trying to collect your thoughts. Um, but yeah, uh, just just a bad movie, just not needed, a dumb idea, badly executed, and it's just the epitome of just lame. And another just cheap, rushed film. You can tell that it's another movie, just like the other two from this trifecta of terribleness, for the most part. I, I will say, yeah, Ernest Rides Again is better than the, these two, but better than Slam Dunk Ernest or, or uh, Ernest Goes to School, but that's not saying much. It's still not great. And... All of them were rushed. All of them were not really films that had a lot of thought put into them. They were just made super quick, super cheap. And it's painfully evident. I mean, when the majority of the movie and its attempts at comedy is just Jim Varney just walking around with crazy legs because his legs are supposed to have a, a mind of their own, you're in some pretty bottom of the barrel territory when it comes to a comedy. Uh, but yeah, uh, just another one I would avoid. Like don't, not even for a dollar. Like I, I'm even, I'm regretting that I spent a dollar on this, to be honest. It was a waste. It was a waste. I could have used that dollar for something else. It would have been a lot more worth my while uh, could have been a lot better. I could buy movies at the local record shop for a dollar, and I'm pretty sure I could have bought a much better film <laughs> for a dollar uh, than than Slam Dunk Ernest. But anyway, that's my review and a little bit of a rant on Slam Dunk Ernest. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.